You're watching Palatinate TV. Hello everyone, I'm Martha, one of the Palatinate News Editors, and these are the interviews for the 2021 SU elections. Uh, I've got Caitlin here, who's running for the role of Welfare and Liberation Officer, uh, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Caitlin, and I'm a first year undergraduate criminology student at Van Milder. Um, so my first question for you is, uh, why did you decide to run for this role this year? Yeah, so I really enjoy getting feedback from people. So I've had kind of um, experience for the first half of the year that I've been here with uh, being a department rep and being a household rep uh, and being part of the talk and sport team in college. So I just wanted to kind of expand on that because I can see some quite blatant issues that I really want to address um, within the SU and within univer and the university as a whole. So yeah, it was just sort of the noticing of problems that I face and problems that people have come to me with through college um, that I wanted to bring to a higher SU level. Um, so you mentioned some blatant issues in the SU that you'd like to and the uni that you'd like to address so can you just go into more detail about those? Yeah so I think the main thing is just like toxic cultures so um, I, I kind of define that as um, I define it as toxic cultures as something where people or a specific group of people or individual people feel uncomfortable being in a in a specific area just because of who they are or um how where they're from or or anything like that so uh, whether that be to do with sexuality or um ethnic group or um background or anything like that so i've kind of found that there's some problems with um, racism not obviously not towards me as a white woman but I've seen it happen in front of me too often for it to be really ignored I've only been here for a couple months and I've seen that as kind of a big issue um, and also misogyny which seems to be a bigger problem than I thought it was um, coming into the uni and I just haven't seen uh, many resources or know where I would go to talk about those issues um, and so I think that's something I kind of want to go into the SU and fix uh, or start to fix um, and make it more accessible to talk about those issues and sort of flag it up to the uni or college. Um, so how do you think being welfare and liberation officer in the SU will allow you to help address those issues more so than like being in another society? Yeah, so I think because the SU oversees, like, um, well, it, it it kind of represents all students, not just if you're in in your college, you're representing the students within your college. I think it's a uni wide issue that needs addressing at a uni level. Um, so it's all well and good kind of fixing it in one college, but then there's issues going on in other colleges that aren't being fixed, sort of thing. Um, so I think the main thing is kind of communicating with as many people as possible and, and getting these resources to as many people as possible. And then um, my main idea was to, my main proposal was to uh, form some sort of discussion groups and stuff like that to kind of um, bring everybody together across the uni. Um, and of course, it's good that we've got our kind of college base where you create kind of like a family. Um, but I think there needs to be more connection between the colleges and and more help between the colleges. Um, so what relevant experience do you have for the role? Yeah, so um, I've, as I say, I was in, I'm in the talk and support team, uh, pastoral team for Van Milder. Um, so I've been doing that for a few months now. So from the start of term and with that role, I kind of get feedback from people. I um, hold talk and support sessions. So if anybody ever wants to come and talk about things, um, it's over Zoom at the moment, but um, they can come on Zoom and, and talk about those issues. Uh, so I've had experience of talking to people and talking with a team of people to come up with different campaigns. So we're doing Shag Month at the moment. Um, so just the idea of that campaigning I've, I've already done. Um, as I say, I'm already part of, I'm a department rep and I'm a household rep. So I have had experience with collecting kind of feedback from a cohort and um, like processing that feedback and feeding it back to the department and to the college. So um, I kind of know how to set up a survey. I, I, I um, have had experience with that. So that will be helpful for getting feedback from uh, students across the university. 
Um, I'm also part of lo lots of different societies to do with kind of public speaking and, and um, poetry and uh, all these sort of, I guess, helpful things that will help me talk to people and, and uh, interpret people's response and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I definitely think all those things will really help me with it. Um, and, and one of my campaigns is to talk about mental health. So I've got a mental health blog that I've done for quite a while now, um, which I'm hoping as part of if I do get elected to kind of extend to people who want to just discuss uh, mental health issues and make it more normal. Uh, like the idea of normalizing mental health is really important. Um, so yeah, I've had experience with that and it's just all of those things joined together really that I think I would be <laughs> good, good in the role. Um, just to ask, are you Nightline trained? Um, no, I'm not currently, but I can look at doing it in the future when I'm sort of, um, when I'm sort of, if I'm elected. Uh, I do, I do do, um, like, I, I tutor a student, so I've got a DBS for that. And I'm also starting on a, on the vaccination program so I am getting involved with kind of first aid and all that sort of thing but um, how far that kind of helps with the role I'm not sure but maybe just sort of like um, I guess getting involved with things um, is what I've enjoyed doing for the past couple months. Um, what would you do differently to your predecessor you and Swift? Um, I think I would just kind of make communication between the SU and students more clear because at the moment it feels very much like the SU is detached from the student body it sort of feels like the the, the SU is is this separate organization that nobody really thinks about um, and there's a select few that follow the Facebook and follow the Instagram or whatever um, so finding a way to integrate those campaigns and and make everybody aware of them and make the SU kind of an approachable or the welfare uh, part of the SU an approachable um body of people as as kind of people who are in the interest uh, working to work in the interest of students um how I do that is just um going through colleges and having resources and also having the welfare team have meetings with different welfare teams from colleges to create that discussion. Um, the idea was to start having kind of welfare meetings ev twice every term or so just to get feedback from the colleges and everybody can discuss and um, give feedback to each other because I was speaking to um, I can't remember which specific college it was, but there were some colleges saying that they would really like communication between the different college welfare teams. So that's something I would um, do differently and, and think that is very important. Um, so you've kind of already touched on this, but what are the main things you'd like to do to support student mental health and also to support college welfare throughout next year, especially if we're still in lockdown? Um, yeah, so I just think making resources much clearer. So um, making them more accessible, making them available to people who don't want to read a big, you know, um, passage of text because you, you go through your university life reading loads of reading loads of pa uh, like papers or or texts or whatever, depending on what you do as a as a degree. Um, so I think a lot of people are a bit reluctant to read a big long email with all the support on it and then don't know where the support is because they haven't read the email and that's not their fault. That's just that they're, they're, they're so busy with everything else. Um, so making those campaigns more accessible, um, whether that be in video form. So somebody actually speaking makes it a lot more um, as if somebody is actually behind the camera rather than just a big, big load of text. Um, and as I say, creating those discussion groups so that people feel included and feel like their feedback is really valued. Um, and also kind of once that feedback has been interpreted and, and talked about within discussions, relaying that information back to the students, because I feel like when feedback is given, often it's kind of it, it, nothing goes back to the students. The students don't know whether that feedback has been listened to or, or talked about. So making it clear that that information has been talked about and here is what we're going to do moving forward. And here is what we'd like you to do to help us with that sort of thing. Just keeping communication um, more alive, especially now that there's no in-person stuff. So, um, 
Do you think that the university and the colleges as well are doing enough to support student mental health through the pandemic? It's kind of a difficult one because I think that the college I'm at, so Van Milder, is there's so much support available, but it's just knowing where to get that support. So I think um, I know that it's available and I don't know how it is in other colleges, obviously, because I'm only part of one. So I can't speak for other colleges. But from what I've seen as part of talk and support is I know it's available. It's just a lot of people don't know where to go and don't have a specific point of contact or don't feel they can talk to the college about um, reporting things or if they have any issues or anything like that. So they kind of keep it to themselves and then the uni and college don't know what's going on. So I think um, one of my main things I was looking at about how feasible it would be is to um, appoint somebody per college to be kind of like the face of support so if you want to go to somebody they are who you would go to and who you would email because currently at least in Van Milder there's kind of a support team but you don't know how long they're going to take to reply and you don't know whether the who it is behind the, behind the email and all that sort of thing so it puts people off uh, taking their issues forward because they don't know who they're bringing it to um, and I think there's there's a kind of fear over like confidentiality and all that and of course they are going to they will keep things confidential but it's kind of like the human mind is going to doubt that that thing so making it more personal making people more able to go and talk to somebody and just having kind of a face to that support um so what specific concrete changes would you like to see the university make during your time as welfare officer yes yeah, so i think the main changes is the policy on um, like what's acceptable within the uni because obviously as in as in uh, bullying and all that sort of thing harassment uh, prejudice obviously the university has a big stance on you know no tolerance of those sorts of things but at the same time it's not clear that you know um, jokes that make people uncomfortable for example aren't acceptable or victim blaming or all those sort of things Things that are quite similar in in um, in their meaning. So people take it, think that it's a joke, or say that it's a joke, but it's not a joke. And it's not funny. It's making somebody feel uncomfortable. But they can use that excuse that it wasn't intended for that. So I think making it more clear that that's not acceptable either, because you are making somebody uncomfortable, and then implementing courses to teach those people why that's not acceptable. So I think what happens often is people are told, oh, it's not acceptable, and they don't know why it's not acceptable. And so then they continue doing it, and then it happens again. And then they're like, but I, I didn't know I did anything wrong. So if we can create things like how the freshers now had to do the Consent Matters course and doing more of those to teach people rather than just putting them to the sidelines and, and ignoring them. Um, because of course, a lot of these people only say the, these things because they are ignorant to, um, to how they should be acting or what they should be saying. So I guess it's just education and more, and more resources about that. Um, so that's the, I think that's the main thing because that would slowly start to um, not one normalize talking about issues and to denormalize being toxic. <laughs> um, of course, it's a very slow process and I don't think anybody could fix it sort of like overnight, but it's, it's, it's something to build on. Um, so how would you ensure that minority students from various backgrounds aren't marginalised various spaces in Durham? Yeah, so I think, as I say, education is the main, the main thing. So a lot of students that I've come across kind of feel that they are the typical Durham students. So they feel that, oh, I'm from a private school. Oh, I'm white. I'm, you know, um, from an advantaged background like I, I and, and they're probably from the south um, usually sorry um, and there's nothing wrong with being from that area they shouldn't have to feel like it's wrong being from that area either but it's kind of the education around how presenting yourself as kind of the typical student makes other students who aren't that criteria feel like they shouldn't be at Durham or they don't belong in Durham or they're not welcome in Durham, which obviously isn't true because we have lots of different students from different places who all, all go to Durham. 
um, and all are the kind of typical Durham student, but just don't feel like it. So making people more aware of how they present themselves can affect people. Um, Because as I say, it kind of links with what I've said about how I don't think people recognize that their actions have such an impact on people. Um, And that just comes with using more resources, having more discussions, having more um, sort of face to face, whether that be on Zoom or in person when obviously COVID um, kind of calms down. a kind of making it more personal, connecting the student with with that support and with that um, ability to talk about things. Um, so I know Ewan has done a, quite a bit of work on like working with private accommodation providers to forgive rent for students who can't return to Durham. And, and they've, SU has also historically worked with the Ripped Off campaign. So do you plan on supporting the aims of the Ripped Off campaign? Yes, so I think it's a very important thing because um, a lot of students feel they are not in the position to pay that at the moment, obviously with the jobs um, the jobs market being very low, so I can't get a job if I, even if I wanted to, um, and a lot of students are in that position. Um, and also when a lot of students are sort of debating as to whether to go back to accommodation or not, I know that we've been told, oh, you don't have to pay for accommodation you're in, but that's obviously not the case for students who are in private a private accommodation and it's 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 almost like the government are telling them not to go back but at the same time they're then paying for something they're not allowed back into so it, it's it's a very unfair position to put people in um and i think i i will do everything i can to kind of work with people to 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 help students in that sense because now we've been through this whole pandemic it's it's a it's a hard time of course but if we can kind of as i as as i've said in my campaign if we can prepare for the hard times then we can kind of compa- uh, prepare for the easier times um so yeah um working on those issues is definitely something that i will support um so you mentioned you're a fresher so what do you think you can bring to the role as a fresher rather than a third year who would be running for this role yeah, so I think as a, as, a, as a fresher, firstly, I have a lot more time than a third year would have um, generally, because, of course, first year is notoriously the sort of the easier time you get involved with everything. Um, it's still it's still a lot of work because you have to obviously put work in, but um, it will mean that I can dedicate more time to the, the welfare issues and, and, and the role that I, if I get elected. I also think I have more of a... Um, kind of external view of Durham because students who've been there for three years or four years um, remember how it was like when they first wanted to go to Durham but that was four years ago and a lot has changed in that time so it kind of gives me the perspective of being in Durham for the half the year the half a year that I've been in Durham but also the perspective of me in the summer when I was um, waiting for my results because obviously the whole government thing um, kind of messed it up and then, you know, the lads group chat coming out, um, uh, the, the second year problem that came out with, with um, um, people making misogynistic comments and that making everybody in group chats feel even scared to go to Durham before we're even there. So I have that kind of perspective of people coming in. Um, and I think that'll help me work at kind of fixing problems before they become problems in the, in the fresher level. So that once it, because if you work from the bottom up, it kind of um, stops the future um, cohorts from doing the wrong thing or becoming, uh, making this toxic environment and it slowly kind of works its way up the the pyramid. Um, But yeah, I think that's mainly uh, the the inner and outer perspective will will help me more than it would help somebody who's in um, second, third, fourth year. Um, So I don't know how much you know about last year's SU elections but from what you do know do you think that you not having been here last year is going to be helpful for dealing with the controversy that has surrounded last year's and still surrounds the SU today? Yeah so I think I mean I've heard about that because I have a couple um, friends who are in the year above. Um, I think student voice is extremely important so that's and and in my campaign that's been one of the main three things that I've kind of looked at as a 
overriding kind of issue. I think that student feedback and student voice is, is the most important thing because without it, then we don't know what students really want because um, I can want one thing and the rest of the student population can want a different thing. So I think really I just want to kind of work on having more feedback from students and having students actually say what they want to the SU rather than the SU do things on behalf of the students that they think the students want. Um, because often it, that can make them feel very detached from the students and the students feel like, oh, they're not really listening to us. They're just doing what they think we want. Um, so yeah, having, as I said, having discussions, discussion sessions might help that. Having regular feedback forms, um, although I know a lot of people um, don't really like filling out loads of surveys, but having them available if people want to have specific feedback to give, um, having having Zoom discussions, having in-person discussions when we are able to do that, um, and just making it clear that the SU are there to help the students rather than to help themselves. Um, so just making students feel valued, really, their voice valued. Um and lastly why should people vote for you um people should vote for me because i'm just i i've cared about these issues as cliche as it is for a long time um you can see that kind of through my work with talking support with van milder and the mental health blog that i i have which is is um it, it's sort of a discussion board to to post poetry music um writing art any of that onto um to kind of try and normalize mental health so I've, I've, I've been working, trying to work on these issues before. I would just really like to make them more accessible to people because as a single student in a single college, it's quite difficult to do that when you're sort of in the sea of students and you don't know how to get that out to people. If I was to be elected, I'd be able to make that more accessible and make people's voices heard more than I could do on my own. Um, and I just think that I will work for the students' best interest. It will be um, the students' voices, not just mine. It will be sort of everybody's voices collectively. Uh, so that's all the questions I have for you. Thank you for talking to me today. Thank you.